You know, every now and then I do manage to come up with a really good idea. This is not one of those times, but I did come up with an idea. A really terrible idea that I just couldn't resist following through with. Now, before I tell you what the idea is, I want to tell you how the idea came about. As you may know, we've got a little shopping district set up here at Spawn. However, the plans are to move the shopping district into the End Island. We even sell my friend Blew Me Up starter kits, which is an untold story which I now shall tell you real quick. Now, this is from a little while ago. So the plan was we were going to go fight the Wither, but I wasn't recording yet because there really wasn't any action to be had. I was waiting until we got to the actual location of the fight. I was tired. It was a long day. I wasn't thinking. And then this happened. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Liz? Right, but, but, yes. Before we go over there, you might want to set your spawn real quick. <laughs> so thanks to Lane for sharing the footage with me. I was able to relive the pain and horror caused to me at the hands of my now declared frenemy, Oda. Oda, you may have won the battle, but you have not won the war. So anyway, as I was saying, we're moving our shopping district into the End Island. And when I say into the end island, I mean inside of the end island. A majority of the crafters spent countless hours literally hollowing the island out. So the fascinating and terrifying thing about this end island shopping district is literally this is entirely dug out so that it's only one block from the void. Let me give you an example. Terrifying. Ooh, I have not seen this yet. That is impressive. I will have to check that out. Death. That is a that is a hole of death. Oh my lanta, look at them all. Holy cow. That's just craziness. All right, back to the shopping district. Reserved for Millie's marvelous books and antiquities. Fabulous. Good job, Millie, because that's a fantastic spot. So maybe we will choose the spot on the other side of the stairs. So I realize it probably feels like we're sidetracked. This really is leading up to my wonderfully terrible idea. So let's quickly knock this build out and then everything will make a little bit more sense. Since the time of building this and surviving a couple of pretty hefty Midwestern snowstorms, we have other builds in the shop area. And it was one build in particular that led me to my really horrible great idea. And that just happens to be Oda's Honey Shop. Now it's not what you think. This great idea is not about revenge exactly. It, it could be. But on the surface it isn't. But let me explain. You see, in order to get into the shop, you actually have to fly into it. And for some of us, that's not so easy on the first try anyway. But it kind of got me to thinking, like, <laughs> what if, what if I ended up flying into this big wall of honey? I'm like, would I stick to it? I mean, I would kind of assume so, but I don't really know so. And then I thought, you know, there's a bunch of other really strange Minecraft questions I've had over the years. So I thought, well, why not make something of this and open up a quote-unquote research lab? So it's not just me doing the experiments. I can recruit other people to do the experiments, especially the ones that pertain to death or dismemberment. What a perfect, perfect thing to do, especially for my frenemy, Oda. So after completing the general store, I went ahead and did a little designing on the inside. I hired Slim Shady to run the register and stocked up on some various items. Now after all that hard work, I had a few things I had to do around the house, so I thought, well, you know what, I'm just going to kind of hang out in here. I think it's pretty safe and well lit. What could possibly go wrong? And when I came back to the computer, I heard some suspicious noises. Oh, she, she, Are you burying me with my own product? <laughs> <laughs> You, Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know you can't 
can't go. You know you can't go AFK in I, the server. Well, I figured I'd be a little under the radar, seeing as though I wasn't in your group chat, and I, you know, I just was... happened to stumble upon your 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 AFK body over here where I came shopping. So it was you, was it, Millie? <laughs> yes. No, you know what? No, I'm gonna stick up. I was protecting you. <laughs> These are naughty, naughty people. I need to start gathering supplies and find a suitable place for our research lab. But first, I have a special delivery that I promised to make to Zinc. And you may have noticed the vast amount of nether wart taking over the base. No, I am not being pranked. Those are actually some of the supplies for the upcoming build. So if you haven't figured it out yet, Zinc's special delivery will be two villagers delivered to his house. What could possibly go wrong? So my brilliant plan, because nothing ever goes wrong with villagers, is to kind of corral them in here and then place down a couple of boats, break my way into the building, and when they come out, they will have nowhere to go but in the boats. Oh great, breathe fella, I'll save you! You guys weren't supposed to be in the same boat, that's why we had two boats laid out. No! I left an escape route! I didn't see that one! Oh! No! They've both gotten out! This is exactly what I didn't want to happen! Villagers never cooperate the way you want them to. I was just about to give up finding the second guy when finally I spotted him in the distance. Oh! 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 oh I see him! I see him! He's a farmer now. Now that I've got them both in boats, what I'm wondering is Java-like bedrock. Can I put a rope or a lead, I should say, on one of the boats and drag it behind? I don't know if that works in Java. Oh, Ed, I admire your determination. I do. Look at you rowing your little heart out. But honey, there's no water. You're just going nowhere. What is what is wrong with your head, Ed? <laughs> what what is happening? Ed, look at me. Ed, look at me. Oh, this guy, this guy either needs a chiropractor or some very intense therapy. I don't know which, or a priest. Needless to say, the lead on a boat trick does not work in Java, so I had to take them one by one. So originally I was thinking that Zinc was going to help transport these guys. So I had it planned out and we would come up with some names for them before we took them over. But since he was unable to make it, that leaves me in charge of naming them. In fairness, I did warn him. And his response? Oh, please do. <laughs> yeah, please. A constant <laughs> living memory that Emmy is around. That, that would be <laughs> wonderful. And Zinc, I'm sorry, but you get what you deserve. Sir Archibald, Reginald Poindexter II, and Ed. I'm very, very concerned about Ed. I still hope he gets the help that he deserves. And now it is high time we get to the main point of this video, building our research lab. Am I the only one that has a really hard time running in this perspective? Because I always run into things. Now for the design, I had originally considered doing kind of a white clinical type of lab, but then I decided, no, 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 that's too clean and that's too good. And I, I want people to kind of know what they're getting themselves into. So I decided it's going to be kind of a dark, rundown, dilapidated building. So that way when they die, they can't pretend they had no idea. Now the next order of business is finding the proper location. I kind of want it to be set out uh, a little ways from spawn. I don't want it to be right in this area. And so then I thought, well, let me look around the area that I plan to have my mega base. Again, I don't want it right in the base area, but somewhere at least relatively close so that it's easy to access. This was one of those situations where I didn't exactly know what I was looking for, but the minute I saw it, I knew I had found it. I think it's gonna be really nice to have it up on a hill, so it kind of looks like a force to be reckoned with, but I didn't really want it in a snowy region because the snow annoys me. So I found this really nice hill that was kind of surrounded by some snowy mountains, and I think it's just the perfect location. And the best part of all, there's already a portal built that I can use. It looks like it's a flower farm. I'm assuming that's Elle's. Hopefully she won't mind. 
So the terraforming, she is done, and we now have a clear canvas in order to build our infamous research lab. And through the magic of video editing, voila, we've got the first couple layers done so we can figure out exactly where it's laying out so it looks right, and I'm very happy with it. I want to show you one of the reasons why I chose this hill, and without giving too much away, because I wish I could tell you guys all the experiments I want to try. They're just horribly delicious. But if, if nothing else gives you a clue, this will. I liked this huge cutout and this huge drop down to what I consider a ravine of death. There will definitely be some death defying and well, death causing experiments done down here. That right there should be reason enough to hit the subscribe button. Two goats in a boat. Okay, enough jibber jabber, it's time to build. And here we have the completed exterior of the brand new research lab. And of course, you know I always like to see it with shaders on. Oh, I think that actually looks really cool. There's still a little bit more I want to do on the outside with some detailing, but for now I think that's a pretty darn good start. And as you can see, safety is our number three priority. <clears throat> Moving right along. There's still much to be done on the inside. I do believe I will be enlisting the help of E and Millie for the interior design work. I do want a sign in the lobby with our catchphrase, what could possibly go wrong? In fact, I believe our mantra will become, what could possibly go wrong, set spawn. <laughs> That'll just be a reminder that before our experiments, it's a really good idea to set your spawn. So before we wrap up, and as a way to kick off the opening of the research lab, I think it is only fair that I do the first experiment and answer the question that started this whole thing, what will happen if I fly into a wall of honey blocks? I have outlined the wall in the appropriate safety tape, filled it up with honey blocks, and we are just about ready to start our first experiment. I mean, really, what could possibly go wrong? Set spawn! See how that works? The plan is to simply fly directly into the wall. Are we gonna stick? Are we gonna die? I don't know, we're gonna find out soon! Oh! Oh, I think we actually went through part of the wall. That was with armor on. I want to try it again without armor this time. I did take a little bit of damage on that first hit, so I'm going to be kind of curious to see what happens if I am completely unprotected. I do have a totem, but ah, we don't need no stinking totem. Okay, just got to line things up, get a little bit of speed, and take this head on. Here we go. Oh, oh, I'm stuck in the wall. <laughs> oh, no. Woo, for science. <laughs> it was totally worth it though oh but don't think that this experiment is done yet no 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 this one's gonna stay in the running because i want to know with enough force can somebody actually get through the wall so this is to be continued in the meantime i do think we need to put some warning signs on this just to make sure everybody knows this is not for the faint of heart and these should not be used without first having signed a waiver. Oh my gosh, you guys, I had so much fun doing this episode. I really hope that you enjoyed watching it. If you did, I think you would also like this one. Check it out.